Good morning, church, and welcome to St. Mark's Youth Sunday. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord today? We are so glad that you came today, whether you have joined us in person or on one of our many streaming platforms, such as Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, or over the phone. We pray that you enjoy this service and leave here fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. Now let us have the opening hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, United Methodist Hymn number 381. prayer. Oh, Father God, thank you for bringing us together on yet another Sunday to praise your holy name. 
We ask that as we begin this service, you will fill this place with your Holy Spirit and open our minds, our hearts, and our ears to fully take in the meditation of your word today. May you please bless the speaker today, and we ask that through her, you will deliver a special message to all of us. God, I also ask that you please bless each and every single person in this room. Lord, only you know what we are going through and the battles that we face, and right now, we just place it all in your hands. May you bless this service and everyone who takes part of it. This we pray in no other name than the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, now let us have the first scripture lesson, Psalm 23, given by Sister Mildred. Oh, the prayer response. Father, I adore you. Now we will have the first scripture lesson given by Sister Mildred. Good morning, church. Um, the first scripture reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. We will have the second scripture lesson given by Sister Alana. The scripture, the scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, 16 to 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters. How does, love, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good? and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love not in the word or speech, but in the deed and truth. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is us, for God is greater than our hearts and we know everything. Beloved, beloved in our, in our hearts, do not condemn us. We have boldness before God. We, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his command, com- commandments and do what pleases him. And what is the commandment and what is his commandment? That we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has committed us. 
All who obey this command, all who obey his commandment, abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Now let us have the hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, United Methodist Hymn number 138. <laughs> Now let us have blessings of birthdays and anniversaries given by Sister Sherelle, followed by notices given by Sister Sierra.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, do we have any birthdays and anniversaries today? No birthdays? Oh, we have one. <laughs> Amen. Any anniversaries? Is it your birthday? Amen. Good morning. Is today your birthday as well? Anniversary? So we have one anniversary and one birthday. Can we please stand and sing happy birthday? Happy anniversary. What are your names? Sister Sharon Smith and for Sister Winifred. Lord, I ask, O oh God, that as they have come before you today, that you would just give them a blessing, that you would bless them both for their birthday and their anniversary, and that you would give them many more days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You will now have the notices. Just announcements and upcoming events. We strongly encourage that all notices be shared to the congregation, be submitted to the church office no later than Thursday. Safe sanctuary reminder, please ensure that all minor children be supervised at all times while on church premises. St. Mark's extends a warm and cordial welcome to any new guests. We invite you to fill out an attendance card and place it in the offering plate. We look forward to you returning to worship with us. If you had not yet found a church, we strongly pray that you will consider St. Mark's to be your home church. As we continue to celebrate 121 years of ministry, we ask all members to bring family or friends to worship with us on Sundays at 11. The member who invites the most guests will be rewarded with a gift card at the end of the month. St. Paul's United Methodist Church is celebrating their annual Men's Day on April 24th at 4 p.m. We are welcome to join them. Long Island West Spring Lay Servant Training starts from April 12th to May 25th. Anyone who is interested, please see Sister Austin Smith at the end of service. St. Mark's United Methodist Men Bus Ride tickets are available. $70, contact any member of the United Methodist Men for any information. As an update to the Finance Committee, the special funds second offering today is now $5,253, and the seed offering is $10,345. St. Mark's Chancel Choir is having their annual spring concert, led by Oscar Stevenson on Sunday, May 19th at 5 p.m. Contributions, adults $30, children under 12, $12 at the door. For more information, please see any of the Chancel Choir members at the end of service. St. Mark's is having their spring revival three nights from May 22nd to May 24th at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday and Thursdays will be on Zoom, led by Reverend Dr. Andrea Smith. And on Friday, May 24th, is led by Sister Sherelle Peters for the young adults and youth in person. The Zoom link and passcode are all in the bulletin down below. Um, again, on July, through July 1st and July 12th, Monday through Fridays, 5 a.m., 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., St. Mark's is having their vacation Bible school. If you want to register, it's $25. Please contact Miss Olivia after service for more information, as well as contact the church office. Again, reminder, please remember to pray, call, or visit our sick and shut-in members. Thank you.
Show us your talent. Um, good morning, church. I'm here on behalf of the stewardship committee to invite you to our upcoming Show Us Your Talent, Talents Day. Um, you, I'm sure you got a copy of the, of the flyer in your bulletin. It does list the categories that we are asking for you to come and participate in. Um, there's also a, sheet, a section of the a flyer where you can put in your information, your name, phone number, the type of performance you're going to do. If you need any equipment, you would list it there and turn it into a mem any member of our stewardship committee. We're asking for you to come out and support, come out and participate in an evening of fellowship, fun games, and entertainment. Thank you. Good morning, church. Uh, I stand here on behalf of Winthrop's Lions Group. We had a symposium yesterday at the church um, where we talked about mental health and stress. And I would like to give a donation to the church just to say thank you for letting us use the building yesterday. So on behalf of Winthrop Lions Club, I present this check to the church. Thank you very much. Please give your remarks and our appreciation to Winthrop Lions Club. Thank you. Now we will have a Sunday school presentation. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not jealous. Love does not boast. Love is not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not rude. That's love. That's love. Love is not me first. Love is not me first. Love is not touchy. Love is not touchy. Love does not think bad things. Love does not think bad things. Love is not happy doing the wrong. Love is not happy doing the wrong. Love rejoices in the truth. Love rejoices in the truth. God's love. God's love. God's love. That's love. First Corinthians chapter 13. God's love, God's love is the greatest gift of all. God's love, God's love is the greatest gift of all. God's love, God's love is the greatest gift of all. God's love, God's love is the greatest gift of all. Love bears all. 
best part is love never fails. Love never fails. God's love. God's love. First Corinthians chapter 13. God's love. God's love is the greatest gift of all. God's love. God's love. Let's give it up for the Sunday School. They did an amazing job. And now let's welcome the praise and worship.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. We bless you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, Sana, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, Sana. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power. By my spirit says the Lord This mountain shall be removed This mountain shall be removed This mountain shall be removed But by my spirit says the Lord It's not by might It's not by power Yeah. 
Let us read Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tide into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the ability to give back to you. We thank you for blessing us with all of these blessings today. And we thank you that you said in your word that if we give, then it will be given back onto us. And so, Lord, we hold you to your word today, and we believe that every single person that has given, you will bless them tremendously. So we thank you in advance for everything that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the music ministry followed by Sister Sherelle's sermon, Show Your Love by Action. I 
life is all He's everything to me Christ is all Amen. Um, before I start speaking, I just want to take this time to acknowledge that I am probably, besides the Sunday school, the youngest person here. And I don't want to speak as if I know everything or I have it all together or as if I'm here to teach you because I'm always here to learn from each and every one of you guys. In fact, as I'm up here, I can see all of you now so I can watch you and I can learn from you while I'm up here. So I just want to let you guys know that I acknowledge that you are the elder and I have to learn from you. But in this moment, I just want us to separate me, not see me, but see God. And I believe that God can use anyone. I believe he can even use me in this moment to speak to each and every one of us, including myself. And so if we can all just put me aside and not notice me, my age, my gender, my color, and just focus on the word of God and what he has to say to his people today. Amen. So good afternoon, St. Mark's. Good afternoon. Today I have some bad news. But before I get into it, the title of today's sermon is Show Your Love by Action. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you are using me today to speak to my heart and speak to the heart of your people. Lord, I ask that you will increase and that I will decrease and that you will have mercy upon us today and show us your compassion and show us your love and let your favor meet us today, O oh God. I ask, oh Lord God, that as you use me, Lord Jesus, you soften the hearts of your people to receive your word and that they will receive it and it will bear much fruit in their lives. I ask, oh Lord God, that your word also bears fruit in my own life, that I will not be a hypocrite in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so show your love by your actor. Do we have any married couples here today? Anyone married? Any married couples? No one here is married? Amen. <laughs> okay. So how would you define love? You guys can yell out an answer, um, a single word. How would you define love? Caring. Anyone else? Patient. Anyone else? Sharing? Yes. Anyone else? Thoughtfulness. Yes. Anyone else? Respect. Kindness. Yes. Amen. Okay, so thank you all for your answers. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7, which the Sunday school did earlier, Hello? Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. 
It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hope, and always perseveres. How many of us have broken at least one of these once? I know I have. In fact, I've probably broken all of them. You see, as humans, it's almost impossible for us not to break any of these at least once. We've all gotten impatient with one another. We've all been easily angered. And we've all had moments where we lost trust. Can we all agree? Amen. But I want to shift our focus a little bit. We know that we're all sinners and that none of us is perfect. So why then does the scripture say Love is patient and love is kind, knowing that we'll slip up and do the exact opposite at least once. I want us to turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. It says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Wow. You see, the scripture tells us that God is love. Therefore, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we are not reading about love as a thing, but love as a person, God. Can we say that God is patient? God is kind? Has anyone here ever experienced the love of God? <laughs> I know I have. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, Long ago the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Now, am I saying that because God is love, that we are not called to love our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, and even our enemies? No. 1 John chapter 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. The Bible also says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We see here that those who love, who show love even in greeting their enemies and their neighbors alike, show themselves to be children of God. But this is not really the point the Holy Spirit was leading me to drive today. You see, I had said earlier that I had some bad news. And I want you to decide for yourself by, by the leading of the Holy Spirit where you stand. 
Turn with me to Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. I'm reading the NKJV, and it says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scripture tells us that the first commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. But sometimes we skip over that part and go straight to the loving our neighbor as ourselves. You see, if we don't first love God, as it states in Mark 12, if we don't first love God the way he requires us to love him, with the entirety of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, how can we love others, let alone love ourselves? Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As Christians, meaning those who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we were bought with a price. And that price is the death of the precious Son of God. Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 6 says, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. First John chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. John chapter three sixteen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And 1 John chapter 3 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. God showed us his love for us when he gave his son to die for our sins. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 to 24. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they heaped abuse on him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats, but entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his stripes, we are healed. To abide in God means to abide in Christ. 
We cannot aim to love our neighbor or even our enemies, those who persecute us, until we first love God. When we go to God first, his love will heal the wounds, the hurts, the traumas that we have endured so that we are properly able to love others and even ourselves. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commandments. In fact, this is love for God. To keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdening. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that he has overcome the world. Even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We cannot claim to love others until we first love God. 1 John 4.20 If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? My question to you today is this. Do you love God? John 14, 15. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. I said earlier that I had some bad news. The bad news is that we have all failed to love God. And we have all failed to keep and obey his commandments. The good news is that we have an opportunity today to love God, to seek his face, and to know his ways. I want you to ponder on this. That these past couple of days, these past few weeks, Based on your treatment of others, the way that you've been talking, the way that you think, would you be guilty of loving God? I end with this scripture. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous the unrighteous his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Do you love God? Amen. That was an awesome sermon by Sister Sherelle. And now continuing, continuing with the theme of love, let us have the recessional hymn, Love Lifted Me, followed by the benediction given by Sister Shiro.
Amen. Um, if we could all just open our hands for the benediction. Lord, I thank you for the word that you've given us today. And I thank you, O oh Lord God, that our hearts are being transformed and our minds are being renewed. I ask, O oh Lord God, that as we have received your word, that it will continue to grow within us and that we would love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And ask, O oh Lord God, that we will love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to grow in our understanding of your love. And ask, O oh Lord God, that you will touch our mouth, that your words will flow out of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have coffee hour downstairs and everyone is invited. Amen.